Welcome back to Hidden Gem Investigates. The last video in the series was all about why you might have missed the greatest show ever made. Also, I gave some reasons why it is the best. But is it? You motherless fucking whores. So today we're going to dive deep into some of the reasons it's the worst TV show ever made. Many threats from Al will follow. You can't cut the throat of every cocksucker whose character it would improve. Yeesh. I promise to start doing more serious videos soon, pinky promise. Let's roll the intro. So let's get the obvious one out of the way and the one of the few reasons there aren't shows like this anymore. The racism, its acceptance, its everyday use and in one character above all others, a hatred portrayed with such brilliance and humour you'd have to convince yourself it was at him at every turn lest you're going to hell. Welcome home, Wu. I've been known to cut the odd part. Guess we can live without them birds then. I ain't begging them for mercy. I had not have to do that. How's he doing? Holding his fucking own. The show takes a few liberties with the time period, loosely based on real events, but takes a lot of creative license with it. The main thing being naughty swears, which you can catch in the shorts on Hidden Gem. Should be 31 videos up now. Hope you'll enjoy the ending. But the racism is pretty accurate for the time. The fuck could we do without you, E.B.? Be fuck you! Pretty much all of the characters exhibit it, and the few black characters there are have a very real place in a world of that period. Any race not white is marginalised here, and some slur will be used at some point. It's my fucking pain. And I am suggesting an improved way of dealing with it. Swedgen doesn't give a fuck. The character Steve, played by Michael J. Harney, is case and point as a character who turns the general racism of the time into something born of ignorant hatred. For those watching the shorts, uh, where each round gets worse and more offensive, we'll appreciate the punchline at the end. It took 30 days to get there, but it was worth it. And what would be my position? I would have punched you in the fucking nose. There are many atrocities in the show towards non-white and foreigners of all types. The Squarehead family Tom is in his father's house. Mike. And on the great day, Mama. his father will take him into it. Papa. As he will all. The Native American severed head. Samuel Fields being tarred. It's my fucking pain. The Chinese prostitutes being starved and cremated. Much the same are the white prostitutes being owned legally by their pimps. It's a far cry from what we have today and alarming at how all the characters in the show mark these events as normal. Hmm. Is it better ignoring these truths of the time or doing what a lot of shows do these days? Absolutely. But it can be a tough watch if you're not used to it. You can help your delicate sensibilities by turning the fuck away. Could also not share, like and subscribe. If you feel like it. Well, how have you watched Deadwood? Or if you're a fan, how do you watch it repeatedly? Most likely on DVD or Blu-ray. But who owns or wants a DVD player these days? Yuck. Takes up shelf space. And most annoying of all, you have to stand up, walk over to said DVD player, remove the disc, play the awkward disc juggle game, then walk back to only watch uh, three to four more episodes before you have to do it all again. It's essentially the modern day equivalent to the stories from our parents about walking miles in snow to get to school. This is a DVD. We walked 30 blocks. Going to school? In the snow. Oh, but wait, Hidden Gem. You can watch it on streaming. Can I fuck? In the UK, to do that, I have to pay for either Apple TV or Amazon Prime and then pay another monthly subscription to access Paramount fucking plus. In the USA and regions that might be able to access HBO Max, it's available, but I bet it ain't cheap. And make it rain, make it rain, make it... Right, number three. A big one now, uh, a really serious one. And what if you love the show and you want to show your love for it? 
Well, uh, you ain't getting any pop characters anytime soon or figures of any kind, if that's your thing. Still playing with dolls, Doctor. Uh, what about t-shirts? There are none official and likely made in a place more oppressive than one of Wu's kitchens. Books? Well, here you might be able to find some. At least there's about four to five that are uh, very interesting and give you some decent background. Posters? Fuck. Ow. Let's take it outside. What about places of brotherly love and community and appreciation for such a monumental series? There is only one. Just the Deadwood Reddit Society, which is the only wholesome piece of social media I've ever encountered. Shout out to the mods of the camp who stop merch bots littering and keeping it a wholesome community of cocksuckers. Those that doubt me. Suck up by choice. <laughs> right, number four. So having watched it all now, you'll spend every moment trying to find actors in other shows. Whoop, whoop. Making you the most unbearable person in the room. Oh look, that's Dan Doherty. That's bad! Ooh, ooh, Charlie Adder. Sorry, I didn't know you. Damn, Jane looks good cleaned up. Mr. Unser? Where's Joni's hat? Mind if we look around? Does Seth Bullock look even more good looking now? Why's Al got a gun? Did Silas always have tattoos? So, Psy is scary in all universes. Call me Curly Bill Brosis. Wait, wait, Dot works for Saruman? Guess he always was a necromancer, digging up bodies. Ill news is an ill guess. If anything, I am robbing the grave. EB has Benjamin Button's disease, and uh, all the opposite. This is my savior, J.F. Sebastian. Uh, Hearst would chop off his own foot for the color. Langrish clearly became a famous actor after Deadwood, as he's been in everything from around 1300 BCE to <laughs> 300 years from now. If Troy falls. Mr. Stryker. Senator Kelly. And why is Nucky's dead wife, Alma? A third term congresswoman. And if you really want to annoy people, just put on either Justified, Ray Donovan, or Son of Anarchy. It's basically a game of Deadwood Guess Who. Number five. Uh, it was cancelled, so there are major spoilers ahead. And, I mean, in all cases, surely it ended before its time. It's never just for one reason. We can take some solace that it was Milch himself that chose to end it, which uh, would be a shame and confusing since the movie was made nearly two decades later. So he uh, definitely had more to say in The Black Hills. Season 3 suffers because of the amount of work in it to set up Season 4. Whole plot lines, characters and major events go unanswered. I am barely speaking to you. He is close to the end. Yes, Billy God! And I won't make others sick. No one gets out alive, don't <laughs> To some, this means season three is the weakest. Now, having watched the whole thing over at least ten times, probably more, I have a lot of love for it, uh, which makes me even more sad there wasn't more. When making notes on the whole series, finding ideas for videos, great quotes and clips, I was surprised how many there are in season three. Uh, there are so many great moments, maybe too many. Less is more sometimes, I guess. So in conclusion, uh, so, <laughs> so, so there we go, a nonsense video really explaining why Deadwood is still the best show. Uh, I'm sorry, not sorry. Sake. Suck it! Um, and I want to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers, uh, all the new views on the channel, uh, for joining me on the live stream last Sunday playing Red Dead Redemption to celebrate 100 subscribers. And thank you to the Deadwood Reddit community and the mods and all the people uh, that got me here. So see you next time on Hidden Gems.